In part one of this series on back flush cleaning Bosch gasoline engine fuel injectors, I went over some of the challenges I faced trying to do it on these CIS fuel injectors. These were the fuel injectors produced you know, from the early mid 1970s right up to the early 1990s. And this is kind of what they look like, okay? And in part two, I want to talk about the earlier mechanical fuel injectors, or what I call MFI fuel injectors that were produced from the late 50s up until the early 1970s. You know, there are some similarities, but there's quite a few differences. So the challenge is, how can I use the same testing procedures and some of the same testing equipment to back flush both of them without having to replicate a bunch of uh, new tools or new supplies to complete the task at hand. So I'm going to begin by talking about the differences in these two fuel injectors. I'm going to show you some of the things that I can use or adapt to make this whole back flush cleaning process simpler. This is the CIS fuel injector on my left here, and this is the earlier mechanical fuel injector on my right. Now there are some similarities, we'll go over those first. Number one, they both have the same threaded fittings on the entry or top end, that makes it easier to attach them to my uh, pressure tester. The other thing is the ends are very close to the same diameter, so I can use this same hose to connect to the tip of the fuel injector. Now these are tough to get on, I have to put a little bit of grease on here, and I'm going to warn you right now that you, you're going to have to fight this on there. And if you don't put a little grease on the tip, you're not going to be able to get the hose on. Now, the CIS injector is slightly smaller, so it goes on a little bit easier. But once again, you're going to have to work this on. And as we learned in part one, once it's on here, you're going to have to clamp it down with a zip tie to keep it from blowing off if you're using the hand pump pressure tester to back flush it. So those are a couple things I'm really happy about. Uh, the, the thing I'm not too happy about that I discovered is on this fume capture bottle, of course the CIS fuel injector goes right through and it can sit down inside the bottle. But not so with the MFI fuel injector. Look at the size of the fitting. It'll just barely go inside the opening. What I had to do is I had to take you know, a box knife here and actually kind of trim away that sharp edge. So I can get the injector into the bottle like that, but I'm not going to be able to get it all the way down inside the bottle, nor am I going to be able to tighten down the cap to get a complete full tight seal on the, any fumes escaping here. You could take some tape and wrap around that if you wanted to you know, tighten up that last little bit of area that might leak fumes out if you're doing a lot of back flush cleaning. So that's the challenge. I'm not going to go ahead and do a second bottle. I'm going to use the same bottle through the test procedure and the cleaning procedure, but I'm going to just trim that edge back and I'm just going to force that injector down in there. So now what I'm going to do is get this thing hooked up and during the process of cleaning this uh, earlier today, I thought, you know, it'd be nice if I could provide a little hand pump or something to just pump cleaner, whether it be lacquer thinner or injector cleaner, back through this fuel injector. And this is what I came up with right here. Look at this. Using one of my infamous curved tip syringes, I modified the tip and attached this on the end. So this now goes into the hose like that. And I can also use a zip tie and tighten that off if I want to. But this will allow me to put, let's say, some lacquer thinner in here. And then under pressure, I'm going to force it back through the fuel injector. Now, why do we need to back flush? <laughs> Let me show you in the next scene. You're going to get a kick out of what I discovered when I opened up one of these MFI fuel injectors. This is the one here I chucked up in the lathe and went ahead and cut it right there. I cut it right kind of in the middle of the threaded area. And of course it opened it right up. I was able to pull the tip out. Take a look at the tip, see? The tip has a spring in there. And of course under pressure you can see that, you know, that's going to open up. So when the uh, pressure reaches a certain amount inside the injector that opens up and these mechanical fuel injectors just spray and then they close right back up. 
So you can imagine after a few hundred thousand miles how many times that's opened and closed, and you may have significant wear in the tip, and no matter how much flushing, forward flushing, back flushing, or whatever other type of cleaning you do, you may never get these MFI fuel injectors to operate properly because that part right there is worn out. Unfortunately, you can't replace that, see? It's sealed at the factory, it's crimped over, so <laughs> there's no way that you can cut this and take it apart and replace the tip and put this all back together. So these are not repairable fuel injectors, but take a look here at what else I found when I opened this up. Look right there, see that? That's a filter. As you saw in the CIS fuel injector, that one had a plastic filter, but this is a metal mesh filter. It's very fine and you can see how easily that could become plugged on this side with old gasoline or dirty gasoline over the years, getting down in this area and plugging up that metal screen. So if you hook this up to my bench mount tester and just pump fuel through it to clean it, it's not going to thoroughly clean that filter. And that's why it's so important that on some of these you have to do a back flush procedure in order to get all the crud out. And once you do a back flush procedure and go ahead and pump it that way, then you can hook up the bench mount tester and pump fluid through it this way. And then when you're all done, check for release pressure and spray pattern as a final test. So I think this gives you a pretty good idea why I am becoming a fan of back flushing. Now I'm going to go ahead and hook one up to the bottle and uh, we're going to use that curved tip syringe and force some lacquer thinner through one of my other injectors and see how that comes out. Well here's the setup. I know some of you are probably thinking, hey Kent, that looks kind of uh, Rube Goldberg, but let me tell you it does work. You can see what I've done here is I've got the MFI fuel injector hooked up to my syringe through the hose. I took the tip here and I opened it up and I put my special plastic fitting in there to keep that tip open. You have to do something to keep the tip open. So when I'm forcing fluid back through, it's going to go through the fuel injector. And I went ahead and took this curved tip syringe, filled it up about halfway with lacquer thinner here just a few minutes ago and then I pushed it through and I want to show you this before I clean the bottle out but look at how dirty that is can you believe that that's pretty much what you may see on some of these old fuel injectors particularly if they've sat in engines that haven't run very much or haven't run at all in the last few years so you may find when you back flush one of these injectors it may be as dirty as this one now notice what I've done here on the curved tip syringe I've actually gotten some saran wrap and put around this rubber plunger. The reason is if you let this rubber plunger come in contact with lacquer thinner or fuel injector cleaner, any other harsh chemical, it's gonna swell up and it's not going to fit inside this syringe housing after a while. So I protect it by just covering this up with some ran wrap, throw it away after each use. I'm gonna put now some paint thinner in here. I'll just hold my finger here and we're just going to put a little bit in here so you can see how this flows through. Now once I put the plunger in, see that it's not going to leak out because it's going to hold pressure. Then I'll take that up here. All right, now watch as, as it flows through the injector. There you can see it. So you can see right away, you could do this without my bench mount tester, but you're going to be filling and pushing a lot on this curved tip syringe. Once again, you can do this. I'll offer this kit without the pressure tester, even without the bottle, and you could rig up something on your own. But now I want to show you with this working in conjunction with my bench mount pressure tester and see how fast we can pump mineral spirits back through this fuel injector. Okay, now I've got it hooked up to my bench mount pressure tester. You can see here I've hooked the hose from the fitting here on the tester. And I, of course, I've got a zip tie on there for a clamp. And then I've run the hose over and put it on the end of the, the injector. I've got a zip tie there. I've got the, the pencil needle opened up. And uh, normally I'd have this mounted on a bench with bolts. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put it here so you can kind of see it. 
And then watch here as I pump into this bottle, I've got my exhaust hose, uh, vent hose going out the window over there in the shop. So right now I'm using mineral spirits. So I'll just pump a little bit of mineral spirits through so you can see how it, it back flushes. See that? Now you notice it's not dirty, but it's not as clean as what I'm putting through. So you're going to be pumping, I would say you could pump, you know, a couple cups of cleaner through here, but uh, you won't know if this is effective until you turn around and mount it back on the tester and do an actual pressure test, checking for the pressure with which it releases and then watching the spray pattern. That's covered in another video that's included with my pressure tester. We're not going to be going over actual testing in this series of videos. We're just going to be talking about back flushing to help you on those stubborn injectors, which you cannot get to test properly just by flushing them the normal way and then testing them on this tester right here. So I'm going to keep experimenting with this a little bit. We're going to figure out exactly what we need to include in the kit uh, so that you can do this on your own. And then I'm going to experiment probably with a few more cleaners and I'll come back in part three and we'll kind of sum that all up for you so you can take on this task on your own.